Hello, welcome to this lesson in engineering mechanics. We're going to uh, continue working with finding resultants or summing vectors together, but we're going to work in component form, Cartesian vector form. Now here we have an interesting problem and it'll illustrate how powerful the technique is. Here we want to add three vectors. We have F1, F2, and F3. Um, now F3 is very simple. It lies totally along the x-axis at 300 newtons. F2 is over here at uh, 400 newtons, and actually there's an angle here given as 30 degrees that I forgot to write down, so that's 30 degrees. So we know the magnitude and direction of F3, we know the magnitude and direction of F2. Now F1, we know the magnitude 250 degrees, but the direction of that vector, F number one, is uh, obscured a little bit. So you'll see this in several problems in your mechanics uh, book, or your homework, or whatever. It's very common. Um, sometimes they like to pull this little trick where they'll draw like a little, almost like a little triangle down below the vector and they'll give you the sides of the triangle. Now it's a silly little trick if you ask me, but they're just trying to make the problem a little bit more challenging. You need to know the directions of all the vectors in order to add them. Here we know that um, it, you can almost think of it as rise over run. So this, this vector goes up three units and over, it goes up three units for every four units that it goes to the right. And we also know the length of the other side. So this is a right triangle, three, four, five right triangle that probably rings a bell from geometry. Um, and basically this information can be used to find the angle that that vector is pointing. So if you ever see like a little triangle hanging down below one of your vectors, they're just trying to give you a way to find the direction of that vector without just giving it to you on a silver platter. Just one more thing you have to do. But our procedure here is going to be uh, exactly the same as it was before. We're going to find the x component of all of these vectors, and then we'll sum those up to find the x component of the resultant. And then we'll find the y component of all of these vectors, and we'll sum those together to find the y component of the resultant. Once we have the x and y of the resultant vector, then we have the answer, uh, you know, if in, in vector form that we can then write down. And this is why it's very easy to do this way. If we had to do it with parallelograms, then we'd basically like have to add these two vectors and get an answer. And then we take that result and add it with this one and get another answer and it just gets cumbersome. So what we want to do is work first of all in the x direction. So we're gonna work in the x direction first. And we're gonna work with vector number one first. Unfortunately, we don't know the angle because it's obscured here. So what I'm going to do is kind of draw this like this. So this is, F1, vector F1. So what they've really drawn is they've said, look, there's a triangle here, this is five, this is three, this is four. So effectively, we want to figure out what the angle of this vector is right here. So how do we find this angle, right? Well, the tangent of any angle in a right triangle like this, this is a right triangle, is opposite over adjacent, right? So you can write it as three fourths which means that the angle is the inverse tangent of 3 fourths. And whenever you take 3 and divide it by 4 in your calculator and take the inverse tangent, you'll get 36.9 degrees. So this whole little triangle hanging off the bottom is just a way for you to figure out that it's 36.9 degrees. Uh, and what, it, where, what does that angle represent? It represents it from here to here. So this angle here, 36.9, from the vector to the x-axis, because that's how they've drawn the triangle there. So now we know the um, magnitude of every vector, and we also know the, an angle or a direction of some kind of every vector. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, let me switch colors, and now let's work on, on the x-direction again, and we'll try to find vector number one in the x direction. What would that be equal to? So we know the length of this vector is 250 newtons. We want to find the x component. Notice this vector points this way. So it points in the negative x direction. So we know there's going to have to be a negative sign there. And then we look at this and we say, well, it's 36 degrees. If we take the cosine of this angle times this, it's going to project it down here which is really what we want. So we'll stick that negative sign in manually and we'll say it's going to be 250 times the cosine of 36.9 degrees, like this. The negative comes from our observation that the vector's pointed in the negative x direction. And then the cosine comes from the observation that if we use the cosine of this angle times the magnitude, it'll chop it down and give us this projection down here. All right? So then what we have is negative 200 Newtons. 
So when we take negative 250 times this, we get negative 200 newtons. Now let's go and look uh, at force number two. Again, only looking in the x direction. This is force number two, so it's uh, 400 times the cosine of 30 degrees, because here this will chop it down to the x direction, which is what we want. Notice the x component of this vector is positive, so we leave a positive sign here. And so it's 400 times cosine 30, we get uh, 346.4 newtons, again acting in the positive direction because this is acting to the right. This one's negative because it's acting to the left. And then finally, F3 sub x, uh, here, you can see F3 is actually 100% along the x-axis, so we can just write 300 newtons straight away. Another way you could say is 300 times the cosine, chopping to x, cosine of 0, but cosine of 0 is 1. So it's just going to give you 300, and that's what we see from our diagram, that F3 lies totally along the x-axis. So then, if we were to um, sum these up, we would write it as the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to negative 200 plus 346.4 plus 300. Okay? And then what we get when we do that, when we add all of these guys together, well, we get 446.4 newtons. This is the resultant of adding all of these vectors together in the x direction, or the x component of the resultant. All right, so now let's move along to the other board. I think I ran out of room there, so let's go and continue working in the y direction. So here we're going to say y direction, and now we want to go f1, f2, f3, and find their y components. So f1 in the y direction, if you again look back here, we know the angle is 36.9 degrees. We want to know the y component, which again is pointing up, so we know it's positive, and so it's going to be sine of 36.9 times this. So it's going to be positive 250 times the sine of 36.9 degrees because that gives us the projection in the y uh, direction, right? So this guy, the angle's there. That's the uh, projection along there, positive. So what we get then is 150.1 newtons. So this is the component pointed in the y direction for this. Now let's look at F2. Over here, we know it's going to be positive again because this vector is more or less pointing positive y, and it's going to be 400 times the sine of 30 degrees. So F2 in the y direction is 400 times the sine of 30 degrees. That projects everything in the y direction there. And so I'm going to get 200 newtons. And so for the third one, F3y, if we look at uh, vector F3, what's the y component? Well, we can do sines and cosines and all that, but we can see that it only lies on the x-axis, so there is no component. It's zero newtons acting in the y direction for that vector. So now we have the y components of everything, and so now we sum up the forces in the y direction. And what we get is 150.1 plus 200 plus zero, and so what we get when we add these guys together, we get 350 0.1 newtons. Notice it's a positive number, and that means that the resultant points positive up, which is exactly what we expect to have. So now we have the x component of the resultant, which is positive, so that means the x component of the resultant points positive x. The y component of the resultant points positive y, and so we can, uh, we have the answer in component form, but if we want to write it in terms of a vector, we can write it as the resultant with a vector bar on top is going to be the x component, which is 446.4. All I've done is take this number here, and that's going to be in the i hat direction, which is the x direction. And then we have 350.1 in the j direction, and let's put a unit of newtons like this. So if you were representing the resultant in terms of scalar components, you would just say fx is this, Fy is this. That would be the scalar representation. If you're representing the resultant in vector form, Cartesian form, you just put the same numbers in front of your unit vectors in i and j, circle that as your answer. So this is uh, the way that you find the resultant. That is the answer, but this answer is represented in Cartesian form. What if you want to know, hey, what is the answer in terms of magnitude and direction, magnitude and angle? So now we have the components here. We can certainly go find the magnitude 
of this vector in the angle. And so the way we do that is we say the magnitude of this resultant force is the square root of the sum of the squares. So we say 446.4 squared plus 350.1 squared. So we do this, and what we end up getting here, when we square these guys and then take the square root, the, um, the resultant is 567.3 newtons. So we'll circle this guy. That's the magnitude of the result. And then over here, let's go find the angle of the result. All right, let's go find the angle of the result. And the way we do that is the angle of the resultant is equal to the inverse tangent of the y component divided by the x component. The y component is 350.1. The x component is 446.4, 446.4. So what we have then is we take and divide these guys, we take the inverse tangent, and what we get is 38.1 degrees. Now ask yourself, before you do anything else, does this angle make sense? Does this angle make sense? Is the quadrant correct? Do we need to add or subtract 180 degrees to this angle? The answer is no, this is correct, because when you think about it, think about it in terms of quadrant. This is positive x, positive y. So that means if I were to put an xy axis here, I'm not gonna plot it exactly, but it's positive x and positive y. So that means this vector lies somewhere in the first quadrant. This 38 degree angle to the x-axis then makes complete sense that that could represent that. If you get an angle that's in a totally different quadrant from what you, uh, what you expect based on your components, then you may have to add 180 degrees to that angle. In this case, we do not. So that is basically how you do it. You resolve everything in x components. You resolve everything in y components, sum those together. Boom, there's your answer. If you want it magnitude and direction, that's how you handle that. Now, again, some books make the distinction. Solve it in terms of scalar components, which is what we've done here. Now I'm going to show you how it's exactly the same thing if you solve it in terms of vector representation. Um, so what we're going to do, which effectively that's really all we've been doing so far anyway, but I just want to show you that sometimes you know books make it more complicated than it needs to be. So what is vector F1? If I go and look at vector F1 in terms of Cartesian representation, F1 in the x direction with negative 200 newtons. So if I wanted to write this, it would be negative 200 in the i direction, plus vector 1 in the y direction, 150.1 in the j direction, right? This is how you would represent vector F1 in terms of its Cartesian representation. Vector F sub 2 in the x direction is 346.4. So 346.4 in the i direction. And vector two in the, in the j direction is 200. So 200 in the j direction. And finally, vector three, these are the three that we're adding together. Vector three is 300 newtons in the i direction, but there's nothing at all in the, j, in the, um, in the uh, y direction for vector three because it's zero. So these three vectors represent the vectors we had originally taken on the board in Cartesian vector representation. The scalar representation are the numbers that we have here for x and y. The vector representation is when we write f1 as its x and y component, f2 as its x and y component with the unit vectors. So if you were going to solve this in the vector way, or in vector notation, then you would just take this guy and you would say the resultant is f1 plus f2 plus f3 when you're adding the vectors. But notice what you're going to be doing. If you add these up vectorially, all you're going to do is add the i components together, and then separately you'll add the j components together. So you would be taking negative 200 plus this plus this and putting it in the i direction. Guess what? That's exactly what we got here. And then you would be taking this plus this and putting it in the j direction, and that's exactly what we did there. So you're getting the same thing. I'm just showing it, you this because a lot of books make that distinction. Sometimes they'll say, solve it in scalar component form, and then that means you just write the x stuff down, write the y stuff down, and all that. Sometimes they'll say, do it in vector notation. And so then you'll know, okay, I'll write vector one is this, vector two is this, vector three is this, add it all together. I add the i components and the j components, which is like adding x and y, and then I get the same answer either way. So that's how to solve this problem. I highly recommend that you start over yourself on a separate sheet of paper, 
Make sure you can solve this problem yourself. Uh, and then when you're confident that you totally get it, you totally understand it, then follow me on to the next lesson where we will continue solving problems of this type. We're going to spend a fair amount of time on this because building these skills, working with components, working with vectors in Cartesian notation, is very, very uh, important to build good skills because after that we'll be going into three dimensions where we have X and Y and Z. And it's all really the same thing, but we just need to make sure we have our skills. The only way you can do that is by solving problems. So work this problem, follow me on to the next lesson, continue building your skills in mechanics.